Uh, ben, you had a tough, you were in a tough spot Saturday. What did you do between Saturday and, and tonight to, that allowed you to come out here and you know, razor sharp, laser focused? Um, I just think every day in practice, I'd just be getting up extra shots, watching film with uh, all my coaches, and I just, tonight it just finally paid off, and then now I just, just got to build on, build on this. You understand that, though, right? You, you were in, in the crosshairs, and you can mm -hmm. understand why that might get some guys down, or mm -hmm. did, Anyone in particular pick you back up, or was it just you're a ball player? You're going you're gonna to miss a shot, and you just got to come back. And I mean, I'm just going to keep shooting it, but uh, all my teammates just picked me up. They know I'm a good shooter. They just keep telling me to keep shooting it, and tonight they, they fell, and it was, a, it was a good win. Jason, you've been, you guys have been banging your head trying to get one of these all, all max season long. What's it like to, to finish one off against one of the better teams in the league? Uh, it's nice because uh, they I think they were really hot coming in on like fire straight or something like that, and it's a good team. Uh, we played a, a whole 40 minutes. We haven't really done that yet uh, in this max season, so it was great to do that. Uh, if you guys were aware of the halftime score tonight, it was 39-26. It was 39-24 at BG on Saturday. Uh, what was that discussion like at halftime? We actually uh, did a simulation in practice because uh, our, our halftime, coming out of halftime, it's been kind of sluggish this year, so we did a, a simulation at halftime. Uh, halfway through practice, went in the locker room, came out, uh, three minutes on the clock, did our layup lines, and it just helped prepare us for tonight. What was the lesson you guys learned from that simulation? Uh, can't blow leads. Got to come out uh, that first war, that first four minutes, and keep what we were doing in the first first half. First time you guys have done something like that this season in practice? Yeah, it is. It is. Ben, you've hit three quick threes to start the game. How important was that to just kind of getting the momentum going for the rest of the night? Yeah, I just think it just built my confidence, and then especially getting the lead and playing with that is something we kind of work on in practice. And now uh, getting into the games and holding that lead is what uh, we have trouble sometimes. But tonight we actually uh, held the lead, and then it was good to come out with the win. You, could that first make come any quicker for you? Like you, when you miss a shot in a big spot, I imagine you want that next shot right away. I mean, did that almost help you get in that, that early open look mm -hmm. uh, in the game tonight? Yeah, I mean, if again, uh, Kind of like I kind of took a step back, and then right when I got that first shot, I knew I knew it was in. By the time I left my hands, and it was just it was a great feeling. Jay, we talked about this at the uh, beginning of the season, but you guys were picked to finish last uh, in preseason polls, and now you're a few games away, and a couple other things from hosting a uh, tournament game. Just how have you gotten there? What's been the biggest thing to get you guys from that prediction to where you guys are now? Uh, staying together and continue to have that chip on our shoulder. Uh, we're learning every game, young team, and we're just getting better each practice, uh, staying together, following with, uh, whatever Coach Bowles has for us, and it's paying off. Is that something that's ever been in the back of your mind, or have you just not thought about it? Uh, I would say, yeah, maybe a little bit, but uh, the goal is just to keep, to keep going up that ladder. You guys have three games left. What's, for you personally, what's going to be the biggest thing to close this out on the right foot? Um, a, a whole 40 minutes, like like we played tonight. Um, if we can put uh, put a whole 40 minutes down, we're tough to beat. Jason, what was it? Uh, <coughs> what were you thinking? What was what were you telling Ben over the last two or three days? To get, uh, him, to get him ready so he could do what he did. Uh, just like he said, when he when he gets it, shoot it. I mean, he's a, he's a great shooter. He knocked down with his first three. It was it was a huge spark for us. Uh, inserted himself to the star, starting lineup because uh, Leonard was a little banged out, and he, he came in and he produced. Is it, I don't want to say it's surprising because you see him every day, you see him can shoot, but but again to to flip sure. it on like he did tonight in the big spot had to be I don't know kind of surprising I guess. Oh no, he does this. Gatorade Player of the Year, he does this. <laughs> this is the second straight game you guys built up with a pretty quick offensive start. Is there anything you can pinpoint that that's Led to that, I know Ben was a big part of it with the with the threes, but uh, I would say it's our defense that uh, has been carried. Like BG, had scored like three points the whole eight minutes, and I don't think Buffalo scored those whole eight minutes. So I, I really think it's taking pride on the defensive end and uh, hitting the per the first punch. What's been clicking most on the defensive side of the floor for you guys? It's obviously been a, a big strength for you over this last month of, of, of winning games. You guys have won four of the last six now, and defense has been a part of it. I mean, what's the biggest? The biggest thing you guys have been doing on that in the floor? Um, our ball pressure has picked up. We're, we're in our gaps more. Uh, a lot of credit to Vess and Ben. They've been uh, walling up 
those guards when they drive, and it's been it's been huge for us. Vest has been tremendous for us recently. Jason, what was going through your head when you lined up that three just in the third, uh, three minutes to go? Uh, he was he was he was sagging off uh, really far, and I shoot that shot a lot during practice, and uh, it, it, he he was sagging off, so I shot it. Many times in practice. What's his main grade on that thing? At, like mm. before, before every like we have this this drill that we do, and before <laughs> every time we do that drill, I shoot at least two. Uh, it was a big guy, so uh, probably not. He probably wanted me to take that. Then, then what, is, what does a game like this feel like for you or do for your confidence level? You, you, you've had a couple injuries. It's been hard to get into a flow, I imagine. And, and to break through in, in a game like this, what, what does that mean for you over, the last, over these next couple of weeks? Uh, I just think it uh, means that kind of hard work pays off. And I've been working a lot recently trying to get back to Full health, and now I just got to build on this and learn and uh, figure out what I did wrong and learn from those mistakes and just keep building. You guys have kind of been knocking on the door for a little while against one of the, these big teams. Is it? Is there a sense of relief in breaking through, or is it just like on to the next one? We keep doing this up. Uh, it's definitely a confidence booster. I mean, we know what we can do, but it's nice to actually get it done. And we're going to use this momentum for the next three, and then into March. I think you know. First of all, awesome crowd. You know that, that group. We need to we need to figure out if they can stick around for a couple more games. And uh, you know the atmosphere was really big. Obviously, the, the uh, start to the game was huge. They got the crowd into it. And you know Ben Roderick, you know coming off the missed free throw at Bowling Green, uh, to have him, you know, do that performance was huge for his confidence for us. You know I think it might be. You know, the first time all year, you know, somebody other than Jason Preston led us an assist. You know, they're double teaming, um, you know, Ben down low. He made some great reads. And uh, unlike the other night, you know, I thought we bent what we didn't break that first, you know, four, six minutes where they made their run uh, in the second half. But, you know, couldn't be proud of our guys for the response, you know, coming off the Bowling Green game. And uh, kind of tells you about the integrity and character of, of them and that they've always been you know, good attitude, come to work every day. You know, we had a great prep day, uh, Sunday, Monday, coming in this game, and a uh, great, great, great win. So did you uh, talk with Ben about it over, since Saturday? Or maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was an assistant, but, uh, you know, a young guy, again, coming up with the missed free throw in a big spot just three days ago was, was like, was locked in from the start tonight. What did you guys discuss? How, how did that happen? The biggest thing, I mean, and it's tough to understand as a freshman, but that game, that didn't lose the game, you know, and and it's one of whatever plays that you could could have changed, but you know, in this game, confidence is everything, and as a coach, as a teammate, you got to build people up, and you know, Ben Vanderplus felt horrible because he was guarding, you know, Turner at the end, and the biggest thing is, you know, I thought Bowling Green game we broke, you know, for the first time, you know, all year, and you know, we led the majority of the game. You know, just like we led start to finish tonight. And I think we're playing really good basketball right now. Um, you know, our, our guys are locked in. You know, they have that one-game mentality. But I think when you make your first shot, you know, your confidence level goes up. And for Ben, you know, for our guys to find him and him to shoot it with confidence, because he's, he's one of a few guys on our team that can make a tough shot with a hand in his face. And, you know, you just need one to go in. And you know, once you see that one go in, the next one a little easier, and you know, he was huge. This is something that, I mean, whenever we see a guy improve or have a big game, we, we expect that time after time after time. But does, is this kind of unlock things for Ben a little bit? Uh, hopefully, been... yeah. I mean, it's got to give him an unbelievable shot of confidence. And you know, he he watched film individually, you know, defensively, offensively from the Bowling Green game. And you know, anytime you get experience, you're going to get better. And you know him being in a close game like he was, you know, against Bowling Green, you know, is going to help him in the long run. It's going to help us in the long run. He's going to be a big part of our future. They said that you guys did a halftime simulation at practice this week after the Bowling Green game. What kind of went into that? Yeah, just you know, something different, you know, because there's there's been some half times where we've come out and you know the other teams make a run. So we did a little simulated 10 minute halftime where they went in, you know, kind of relaxed, rested. You know, we talked about. Uh, keys to the game and came out 
you know, we didn't execute very well. But, uh, you know, I think just the mindset of knowing that the urgency they have to come out with in the second half. And, you know, I walked in and I said, hey, do I need to yell at you? Because I will. You know, we, we've been in this situation before. And they said, we got you. And they, they, they had me. Bonda, and I know we finished with three points, five points, but that doesn't begin to, to show the impact he had. Can you can you describe? And again, a, a lot of these plays aren't showing up on the stat sheet, but his ability to wall up, and, and I thought it was critical tonight with the way they drive the mat, the way he's just kind of holding your, the center of your defense together. Right now. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, we're a much better team when he's on the floor, and we've talked about to him, you know, not getting in foul trouble, you know, because we're better with him on the floor. And he's such a defensive stalwart for us. You know, he knows where to be, when to be there. You know, he's been, he was well coached at Georgia Tech. Um, you know, you got a fifth year kid who's practiced a lot against ACC opponents. And, you know, he, he rebounds the ball, he sets great screens. You know, he, he knows how to play. And, you know, he, he's a big reason why we've been playing well lately. Going back to the halftime thing, was that something that you had done at Stony Brook at all? I and mean, when did you come up with that? No, you know, I just I, I kind of thought about it. And you know, said, "Hey, let's simulate it." You know, because you practice, you know, pretty much everything else, but you don't really practice halftime. You know, coming out, and you know, you, you you you're in for 15 minutes. Normally, you take the first five for the the team bathroom, water, or whatever they got to do, and then 10 minute mark to six minute mark, you talk about adjustments you make. You know, keys, focus, what you want to do in the second half, and you really don't practice it. You know, in in, in the course of a you know hour and 15 minute practice, so something different. You know, something to you know, for them to think about and really lock in mentally um, to coming out in the second half. How are you from the start of the season? Uh, you guys were picked to finish last uh, in the conference standings, and now you're a few games away from hosting a playoff game. Um, what, to you, what's, what's been the biggest thing to get there to, you know, kind of silence that, that criticism? Yeah, I think number one, I mean, rightfully so, we probably should have been picked last. I think we had 20% of our scoring you know, coming back, lost to some good players and some transfers and had a lot of freshmen coming in. But, you know, if you go back, we talked about day one, we had two goals. You know, get better every day, get closer to the team every day. And I think it speaks to the character of these guys, uh, who they are, our coaching staff, you know, being positive, keep coaching. Because we went through some tough stretches, played a really tough non-conference schedule. And, you know, we lost a lot of close games uh, in the first part of the MAC play. But, you know, as a coach, you know it's a long season. And, you know, you know you're going to get better. You just got to keep coaching them. You got to be positive, encourage, you know, build them up, show them positive clips, negative clips. And, and you want to see the growth. And I think we've seen that, you know, from our guys. And I told them, I said, you can be anybody that you play. You know, we lost to Akron by two. And you know, we lost to Toledo by two. Northern, uh, Northern Illinois by, you know, one or two. So we've shown we can play those games, and this is the second game that we've beaten somebody that's been ahead of us in the rankings, Central Michigan being the first. You got another opportunity on Friday night, TV game, and you know against Kent State, the team that just you know put it on is pretty good uh, a week ago. How much of that growth is about you know X's and O's and drawing up the plays and you know the schemes and everything compared to you know the intangibles, the culture and, and things like that? I think it's, it's both. You know, it's both. It's, it's like you know, you, you got to test the mood of your team. It's a different kid nowadays. And, you know, as a coach, you got to get the pulse of it and figure out if they're down, if they're up. You know, like we had a deflating loss. So we, there was a power outage Sunday. So we took our guys to ping, you know, watched recap BG, went over to Pete and lifted, came back to ping, watched film on Buffalo, went out, walked through four plays, and I did a free throw draft. You know, we had a contest. And I don't know, our, our GAs found out how to get a microphone on an iPhone. We had our little boom box there, and, and I was announcing it like a 15-round a fight. You know, with, with, and, you know, just something to liven the mood up, and you know, they, were, they, were, they were into it. Um, and then they came in and got, got back to work on Monday. You're always uh, operating on that one game at a time mentality, but uh, with three games left, um, just how do you look to close out the stretch and you know, really secure that? That playoff game. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about all year, right? Control what you can. Your attitude, your actions, you know, one game mentality. You're wasting energy looking ahead, looking back, figuring out tiebreakers. You know, come in with that mindset. And, you know, I think the, the one thing that we do talk about is you have four guaranteed games left, right? You, you, you have only so many minutes left with this team. And you got to play with an urgency. 
and our guys have been doing that. What, what does it feel like to, to finally? Everyone assumes you're going to break through and win one of these games at some point, but until it actually happens, it's, it's still kind of hanging out there. What's it like to, to cross that off the list? To, to face one of the max best, get a big lead at halftime, and, and, and not not blow it in the second half? Yeah, I mean, break new ground. Yeah, that, that's the biggest thing is really seeing it come to fruition. You know, doing it because it's like. You know, even at the end, we gave up some offensive rebounds uh, in our zone, but our, our zone was really good. It stagnated them and didn't let them drive in there. And, you know, the game winning plays, you know, making free throws. London McDay came and hit, you know, big free throws. You know, Miles Brown hit a big layup. Um, you know, Connor Merle came in, got two big offensive rebounds. So just making those game winning plays, you know, when it matters. And, you know, we had, we had a big enough cushion, you know, where we could make a mistake. But you can't do that in those close games. You know, you can't not come back to the basketball and turn it over, you know, out of bounds. So there's still, you know, learning to do. And the best way to learn is by winning. You know, you can still learn from winning just like you can learn from losing. And, um, you know, but I think it obviously gives us a lot of confidence. Was, was there a, a different feel in the locker room after the game, finally breaking through and beating one of these teams that people don't think you're supposed to? Well, I think our guys have a lot of confidence. You know, they believe in each other. And all year long, we talk about, you know, E plus R equals O, right? The event happened, what's your response going to be? And they come to work every single day. They have a great attitude. You know, they love each other. They're fun to be around. You know, and you're in the dog days right now. You're in, like, money time. Like, you're, you're close to March. And this is when you want to be playing your best basketball. And I think, you know, we are. Defense has really been kind of stepped up in the last few weeks. How much pride do you take in how improved they've been uh, recently compared to the beginning of the season? And uh, I mean, what's, what's been clicking on that? Energy? Yeah, I mean, if you look back at it, you know, I forget whatever we talked about maybe three weeks ago, we were 284th in the country in, in defense, you know, analytically. And just the other day, we were 209. And that's why you've won four of your last six and been in, you know, the other one you probably should have won. So I think ball pressure, the, the urgency, the sense and awareness, the gaps, rebounding, you know, all those things add up. And I'll give, I'll give our guys credit. It started with Jason Preston and Ben Vanderplas. You know, they set the tone for that week in practice after the Ball State game, and uh, we've been able to carry it through. Were you impressed by your teammates' ability to kind of be able to focus in the second half when it got all bogged down by fouls? Yeah, it was, it was weird. They, I mean, we, we it was a weird game from a call standpoint. They put so much pressure on you, where they put their head down and drive. So they're going to initiate contact, create contact. And, you know, some calls they let go, some calls we got called for fouls. So that's part of the reason we went to that zone in the second half is to try to limit their drives. And, you know, all the biggest thing is, you know, those, those officials do a great job. They have a hard job. And the only thing you want is consistency on both ends. And I thought with their pressure, the way they were, you know, stepping up into us, we need to be able to get those calls. And, and, and we did and, um, you know, made our free throws. You guys win tonight, maybe your best one of the conference season. You actually slip from eighth to ninth place. Or is that completely out of the way? You don't even care about. Yeah, I don't care about that. You know, it's you know deal where our guys. You know, we won the game. You're putting yourself in position. You, know, you can't worry about what other teams do. Control what you can. You know, there's three games to go, and there's going to be a lot more turnover these next three games.